victory is just around the corner in Ukraine, but it's not moving at the speed of sound, like an F-16. It's moving at the speed of a marine on the bow of a tanker on the Straits of Hormuz, with his arms thrown back yelling, I'm king of the world. And yes, they're marines, and they get bored. Somebody's going to do this. The flashy headlines grabbing the news this week involves two U.S. allies, Denmark and the Netherlands, agreeing with Washington to send several score of F-16s to Ukraine. Now, the Fighting Falcon was considered the best fighter in the world back in my day, and even today is pretty much the gold standard for lightweight multi-role combat aircraft. As the Second World War ended, fighter aircraft began to grow in weight and complexity, beginning with the P-47 Jug and culminating in the F-14 Tomcat. These jets were, and are, kings of the sky, but they were expensive and heavy. So when NATO wanted a standardized fighter back in the mid-70s, a few mavericks had some radical ideas. These designers envisioned a single-engined fighter plane so agile the pilot literally reclined to protect themselves from the G-forces. The deal came down to the YF-16 and the YF-17. Of course, we know the F-16 won the competition and became the standard NATO fighter plane. Well, the YF-17 won too, just not that one. You know the YF-17 as the FA-18, since the Navy thought its twin engines and twin tail friends would work well off of an aircraft carrier. Originally it was the F-18, but they decided to combine the fighter and attack roles into one jet and became the F-A-18. Now, when the F-16 takes to the skies over Ukraine, it will provide them with a multi-role capability no other jet really provides at that price tag. In fact, the F-16 is a little too good at what it does. A few years ago, routine maintenance discovered minute cracks along the wings because of all the ordnance that was being hung on them. The F-16s going to Ukraine are older, but the current models are built at a plant in Greenville, South Carolina. Had to put a plug in for, yeah, that Greenville. As the last century wound down, the Danes and the Dutch received F-16 A-B versions, the Block 20 production lines. Some of these have already been passed along to nations in South America and the Middle East. Nonetheless, these F-16s are going to change the war in Ukraine, because as the Russians have demonstrated, it really does not matter how old the airplanes are. Um, look at what they're using there now. The uh, arrival of the F-16s will take time, with some Pentagon watchers speculating an arrival date of next year. In fact, what was authorized this past week was the training materials for Copenhagen and The Hague to pass along to the Ukrainians. Not the jet, just the training manuals. Um, this is a really good point, time to mention that when we sell a jet to other countries, we get to tell them what they can do with it, or even just the engines. Even if they just have our engines, we get a say in where they go after they use them. Now, this is the point in the show where for the past month or so, I would begin talking about how just giving Ukraine the latest and greatest weapons is not enough, and I am now thrilled I don't have to do that. Instead, I am going to congratulate the Biden White House for using assets we already have on the ground in a new front, the struggle against Iran. The real action taking place in the war in Ukraine is on the new front lines against Iran. 
The Biden administration has sent the Bataan Amphibious Ready Group and the 26th Marine Expeditionary Unit to the Gulf. The amphibious ship USS Bataan and the dock landing ship USS Carter Hall arrived in the area within the past few weeks. Now, the reason they're there is started on July 5th, when Iran decided not to leave well enough alone. Oh, they could have continued shipping their weapons to Russia, and the Marines probably wouldn't be there. Then they decided to grab two tankers in the Gulf. When I say grab, we're talking pirate style. The first vessel was the TRF Moss. It was a tanker flagged in the Marshall Islands. An Iranian vessel approached it, firing small arms and, quote, crew served weapons, which could be anything from a Soviet 12.5 millimeter heavy machine gun to upwards of a 40 millimeter cannon. The USS McFall intervened, and the guided missile cruiser carrying significantly more than crew served weapons was able to send the Iranians running. But later that day, they did the same thing with a ship named the Richmond Voyager, a tanker flagged in the Bahamas. And this is not, there's a reason the guided missile destroyer was there, because U.S. Central Command reports Iran has grabbed a score of merchant ships in the past two years. So what we're doing is we are escalating from the tanker wars of the 80s. Back then we just put a flag on the front of the ship and told them to stay behind the frigate until they got out of the Gulf. And that worked fine. Today we are putting Marines on those ships with their own small arms and crew-served weapons. Uh, backing up these Marines are MV-22 Ospreys full of more Marines and AV-8B Harrier jump jets to make sure everybody makes it home safe. Except anybody who tries to take the ship, whoever that might be. Uh, now, last month, Central Command dispatched destroyer USS Thomas Hudner along with F-35 and F-16 jets to the area in addition to A-10 Warthogs that were already in the Gulf. Uh, just to specify, the F-35s and F-16s and A-10s are totally different than the Marine aviation. You see, every Marine second lieutenant on the ground whether they're on that carrier or on, or on a hill in Korea, is in command of their own Air Force. Marine aviation is back of that officer. And when they get on the radio and call in support, it's coming. In fact, that's actually ticked off a uh, few other services, but that's a whole other issue. So... The Marines have their own little Air Force back of them. These are Air Force assets. Now, in the first part of the broadcast, I discussed the F-16. It's amazing, and it will keep the skies clear. Because in the Gulf, on the waters, the A-10s and the F-35s are their big deals here. Um, the F-16 is more of a strategic weapon. It'll be at 30,000 feet. And Iran, if it had wanted all-out war with anybody, we would have had that on July the 5th. The A-10 is very significant. It's perhaps the ultimate attack jet, period. It can literally come home on a wing and a prayer, because its job is to fly low and slow and take tanks out with a gun. And it's a big gun, but it's still a gun. Uh, when you see a picture of this jet, its square wings tell you all you need to know about its job. Personally, the first time I ever saw a Warthog turn and come back over top of me, it was like a Cessna 152 maneuvering, a little two-seater trainer plane. 
these things can turn literally not on a dime, but on a penny. They're sending a message to Iran with A-10s. This jet can take out anything that they put on the water, and then it'll come back for more. Now, the F-35 is a big message, too. It's kind of the modern version of the A-10. This is a vertical takeoff and landing jet that can hover in one place. You know, like over an Iranian boat trying to grab a tanker, or over top of the tanker where the Marines are keeping the Iranians from grabbing it. Now, you're not going to see these Marines on TikTok talking about what they're doing. This is an unglamorous job. It's a bunch of young men and women sitting on a hot metal deck for hours on end as they move like at four miles per hour within golf ball range of either side of the Persian Gulf. Uh, these folks are just glad they got off Paris Island in one piece. See, that's the deal with the Marines. They're the few, the proud, and the reason the drill instructors are so famous, they scare the Marines. When the Marines hit the beach, when the Marines are staring down the Iranians, all they're doing is they're looking out thinking, you are not as scary as my sergeant back on Paris Island. The Ukrainians are fighting a hard, bloody battle. And they're doing a very important job. They're holding the Russians in place. But this second front, this is where Vladimir Putin will be rolled back. And I congratulate the Biden administration on this strategic decision. No! 